Okay, this is Shannon with CC Testing Services again. Um, part three, at, in, uh, understanding your, or interpreting your child's score report. So come on, let's get back to this report. We ended with math procedures. So, well, we, well, excuse me, we did math problem solving and we stopped at math procedures. So let's look at this math procedure. So here we are, math procedures. Let's look at, we have 23 out of 32, okay? Now let's look at this again, what we talked about. Remember, it's only 32 problems. So if you add up those three, computation with whole numbers, computation with decimals, can you read that? And computation with fractions. Sorry, there you go. That equals 32. 10 and 10 and 12 is 32, and I just, did I score 100 on my math? Okay, I did. Um, okay, so all these others, computation with symbolic notation and thinking skills, those are all in, and oh, one more, computation in context. Those are actually um, embedded questions. Again, they're not separate questions because if you added all those up, 10, 10, 12, 16, 16, 16, that's way more than 32. So um, those are the only things that were actually questions. Those three sections, okay? Now, computation with whole numbers, that's just like 24 plus 52. Horizontal, vertical, different ways, okay? So the student needs to be able to do that. Sometimes there can be two-digit numbers plus a three-digit number plus a four-digit number, depending on, you know, of course, grade level. Um, they also have computation with decimals, and sometimes those are actually going they're going horizontal across, and then when they go to add them, they have to put them, line them up vertically. So sometimes kids have trouble with that. So um, you have to just take into consideration. So there's different ways to do problems. We also have um, a computation with fractions. So there's a fractions like. Um, an example problem that I'm pulling from class guide for classroom planning for Pearson is um, they have a certain the students in the class they're doing an art project two thirds want to choose to paint a landscape and three fifths want to choose to paint portraits how many more chose to paint landscapes than the fraction that chose to paint portraits so um, landscapes is two thirds and um, the, land, the portraits is 3 twelfths. So you have, they have to know that they have to subtract, and then they need to make a common denominator, and you know, do the whole fraction, at, you know, adding your fractions from there. So that is a problem, it comes from the book. So that's what you're gonna get for fractions. So let's take a look to, um, so let's look, 23 out of 32. That gives us 72% correct. So if you're taking a test, that's a 72. Um, the national percent correct is a 64, okay? So, let's look here. Um, so let's look on the, the first page, let's look, go up. And we have math procedures, 23 out of 32. That gave us a 57%, it put us in the 57th percentile, okay? Now, I want you to think about something, because this really confuses people, probably more than any other question on here. Okay. My students scored 72. Okay. The, the average was a 64. So that student that scored a 64 now becomes the middle. Now goes down to the 50th percentile. Okay. So I know it's hard to think, you had a 64, why are you 50th percentile? Because percentile and percent correct are very different, or percentile rank, I should say, are very different, is very different than percent correct. So the person with a 64 now becomes the norm because the, the average student scored a 64. The, the average on that test is a 64. So now they're, um, that puts that person, that student, or those that maybe as a group of students that scored in the 64, but they now become the average. And they're going to be in that middle of the line of that bell curve, and everybody's going to go to one side or the other of them. Okay, so that's where you're going to get your stay nines, that's where you're going to get all those other um, things that we were looking at on the first page. 
So again, that's why your student with a 72 on the test can, excuse me, end up with a 57 as a percentile rank. So don't make you dizzy there, okay? Um, okay, so that explains that. So let's kind of move on. The next one we have is spelling. And spelling, how many problems? There's 40 problems total. 40, okay. The student answered 32 correct. Let's do our adding again. So we have 18 and 10 and seven and five. So all of those questions now are part of that 40. There's no built-in questions. You see no thinking skill, you don't see a thinking skills or anything else. So all those questions were included in that subtest. There were no extras to add on. So we can look at this, phonetic principles. This is in spelling. Do they know their phonetics? It's gonna be questions like that. Do they know structural? And let me get an example of those for you. So, um, okay, so, sorry, um, let's do my math. So we're gonna go to study. My book doesn't go in the same order, sorry. Um, to go backwards. Okay, so here is the spelling section. I'm still not finding the spelling section, sorry. Well, anyway, since I can't find it, this is probably a good time to move to the second. Let's let's make this the end of uh, the third uh, part. So we'll come back and finish the rest. Okay.